Casper representing Team Starcraft Stra Starcraft 2 Strategy versus Ineffable Ineffable for Pulse. If I could pronounce one of these names without screwing <laughs> it up, that'd be cool. At any rate, Ineffable <laughs> representing Team Pulse. He is. Let me pull him up here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> His name is Zach Bat Batten. He uh, started StarCraft II in early 2012, uh, and apparently that summer he ended up breaking his leg, so he practiced StarCraft II and made it all the way to Master League. He played in a, a WCG Canada Qualifiers. He finished top four, only lost to Henderlisk to knock him out. Henderlisk is a, uh, he's a pretty well-known player, too. Yep, so uh, as we've said multiple times before, a lot of these players... Uh, do go fairly far in these tournaments and uh, end up getting knocked out by names that you would recognize, just further showing that their skill is pretty formidable and they could uh, at any moment have a breakout performance and uh, be on the top scene. Very true. And just to let everybody know, after we finish up this game, because this is definitely our last game, it's it's a match point both players, so the winner of this takes home the prize, the loser goes home, and uh, hopefully we see them back next season. But we are going to have an interview with the winning team after this match, so do stick around for that. Uh, this should prove to be interesting, but one shout out here real quick as we are going into our last game. We want to say a big thanks to DOS Keyboard for sponsoring SC2CTL. Uh, do follow them on Twitter, at DOS Keyboard as well, and I'm going to post in chat here a, uh, a little tweet. If you would take a moment, go to your Twitter, send that to them. It's got all of us tagged in it, and send a little personal message on the end. It says a big thanks to them for putting up what they've put up for this league. It also lets them know that it's worthwhile and encourages them to continue doing that. So... Uh, sending some love their way is definitely awesome. Follow at Wingnet SC, at Galligation, at SC2CTL, and I think with that, we're ready to move into game number nine. <laughs> Let's do it. All, right. all the bases are covered. <laughs> all, the base, all the bases are covered. So this is definitely my favorite map. Moving on the left side, the pink Zerg, he came back to bring it back to match point. He is Casper. And in the top right-hand corner, representing Team Pulse, it is Ineffable. So I think this is the first, first PVZ of the day. Uh, we have not got to see that. I think we've got to see almost every other matchup except, uh, I think, one of the mirrors. So a new game for us to see. Looks like Ineffable is going to be going for a pylon out front for some kind of either next first or Forge Fast Expand. We will be determined, I'm sure, once he gets his scout out here to see what Casper's up to. He absolutely is. And, you know, you mentioned before that uh, you this is one of your more favorite maps. I kind of like the attention to detail that was put in by the uh, whoever it was that designed the map. There's a lot of neat little advertisements if you ever have a chance to <laughs> poke around. There's, like, some 7-Eleven signs and some Star League signs and WCS signs and neat stuff like that. So it is kind of fun. And plus, you know, it has, like, the Costa del Sol for those Final Fantasy fans out there type lawn chairs and beachfront property. Yeah, it definitely seems like a uh, advertisement for WCS Korea. <laughs> <laughs> as we see all the billboards here are WCS Korea and, as you mentioned, the 7-Eleven, uh, because who doesn't want a Slurpee while you're watching WCS Korea? Man, I tell you what, I would love a Slurpee any day of the week. So it looks like uh, Spawning Pool is going to be going down here at 16 for Casper, so Casper is yet undecided. Well, I guess, uh, given the fact he hasn't anything he has decided, he's going to be going for Nexus first, knowing that no pressure is going to be coming real quick. It's a, uh, a good decision by him. Fairly common decision, too. It seems like most games, uh, PVZ, it's almost always Nexus first, unless something super aggressive is spotted. Casper being super smart here, knowing that probe is there, he's taking two drones down. He's going to try and use one to chase away the drone, or, and the other one to put down the actual base. He might even try and kill it here. And Ineffable is forced to pull his probe away. That's a good play, too, because sometimes that probe can put down that annoying little pylon there, and if you have two probes, you can even just block the space to allow that pylon to be put down. He absolutely can, and that was, I think, part of the intention of bringing both of those down. So this is going to be a safe expansion from Casper, as he did get the spawn pool first, so any aggression that comes his way, he will be ready for. He does have four lings on the map now. It looks like uh, Ineffable has a solid wall here? I think that there's a small space in between the pylon and the forge. Uh, or maybe, maybe the gateway and the... Oh, I don't know. It looks, looks like a solid wall to me, but it's so hard to tell sometimes. We will see once these zerglings come up, but this cannon... Yeah, it looks like this cannon's going to finish about the same time as the zerglings come up here, so probably won't be able to get too much, but if this is a solid wall, that would be an impression to me that there's going to be some Stargate action. 
Yes, and it does you're right, like it is a solid wall. But the cannon's gonna come up to send it away, but I mean, if I was a Zerg going in a PvZ, I would say, okay, solid wall, probably not gonna be making that many ground forces as it's really hard to get through a solid wall. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is. You have to do a baneling bust or you have to just expand, which is what he's doing. He's going to expand and get that macro up. He's going to he knows that his opponent is not going to be expanding anytime soon. I feel like one of the strongest plays for Zerg right now, and maybe it's just because I find it so hard to deal with is the early baneling bus because I mean this wall is like the most important thing in the world to the Protoss, especially a Protoss that's not making much of an army. So, I mean if you can get that off with some lings that follow it, it almost always does a decent amount of damage. That is a hugely risky play, though. However, as if you lose all that stuff, then there's nothing back at home, and you haven't really been doing economy. So it looks like Casper's just going to be going for the secure play. He's going to get that third base up. He's going to start spreading creep. He's going to you know, just keep making drones. The Overlord did make its way through Ineffable's base and uh, spotted the pylon. Uh, didn't really see anything going down yet, but the Cybercore did just finish Warpgate going down a Stalker being Chrono Boost. Yet to see exactly what he's going to be going for, but with warp gate going down, I'd, you'd expect some kind of gateway push here, maybe kill off one of those pylons. But Casper not being all too uncurious as he's sending Zerglings around doing. I mean, the biggest thing we've seen out of Casper is his map control is fantastic. And you know, it really has to be at this phase. You, it, the worst thing in the world is to have your whole team out of a tournament because you lost by not scouting. So he is very aware of that. He's running his stuff all around the map. He's trying to make sure that he's got every corner covered, that nothing is going to get by him. But there is a probe in the top left who's going to try and sneakily make his way into some position to do something. We do have three Stargates coming down from Ineffable, so my spidey senses were correct. But the thing is that that uh, Overlord that was being shot at by that Stalker did see the Stargate, so Casper's going to know there is going to be some airplay coming, but maybe not exactly sure how much. Now, recently we've been seeing some interesting airplay by Protoss, where... Uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want Protoss to figure this out, but <laughs> it's, it's pretty scary. Because what do they do? They make like a couple of Void Rays, they go kill a hatch, and then they uh, just make carriers of all things. Yeah, you get... Uh, I think the number is like between four and five, depending on your preference, and use your mothership core to just go snipe a hatch and recall back and then just turtle. Yeah, you make some un insane... I mean, the number of cannons that we've seen made for that build are obnoxious. It is just a huge <laughs> number of cannons, uh, tons and tons of investment, but it's so hard to break. So we've seen that be very effective. It'll be interesting to see if we see a similar strategy. We do see two Void Rays in production right now. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's such a strong play because what do we see out of Casper right now? We see a Roach Warren, Ling Speed, and a Lair. So, I mean, unless he goes for an immediate Spire, I mean, he's going to be free to do whatever he wants because he's pumping out, uh, we'll just say, an average of two Void Rays at a time right now because he is doing some gateway units to follow it up. But, I mean, Void Rays kill Roaches so fast. And it looks like Casper's going to be going for the Hydra and Roach play. The upgrades, he did get the speed on his uh, overlords, so those are going to be a little bit faster as well as his overseers. But now we do see a small force of zealots and void rays moving forward, and that is going to be hard for him to deal with, I think. Yeah, I mean, he does have six roaches coming out on one hydralist now, but those roaches don't have speed yet, and the hydras certainly don't have speed or range, so this is really catching at an awkward time Casper in how to defend it. And Casper doesn't have his defenses down like he needs. The Queens are moving forward. There are three there, but these Zealots are going to be able to do some big damage to those. So he's going to have to get out. This is hitting a little bit before Casper would like, as he does have what he needs to defend against it on creep. But he is still going to lose that base, and if he was smart, I think he'd recall. And sure enough, that's what he does. Here comes the recall. So, I mean, that's exactly what you want to do as Neffable right now, because that puts you on an even footing. With that, uh, with that third base, Casper is definitely in the lead, but now Ineffable, even though he's still on two bases, he's at least even, if not ahead. Three more Void Rays are in production, it looks like we're going to be seeing uh, Zealot Void Ray type play for the rest of the day, as the uh, ground and air are, uh, upgrades are going down simultaneously. So here comes the conundrum we haven't exactly theorycrafted our way out of yet, is 
how do you handle this as Zerg? I mean, have you thought about that anymore? You know, I, I haven't really sat down and really sunk my teeth in it too much, but, I you know, it looks like the fact that this is a Void Ray and, uh, and Zealot play, I mean, there's a couple of Stalkers being reinforced with this army now. It, it's a very diverse uh, type build, and I, but I think Hydralisks are the right... Uh, the right move here for this particular play, but we'll see. I mean, it's it's hard to tell. That creep spread is going to be super key. I like that he's got the queens up there, continuing to spread that. He's re-expanding. All that is good stuff. That's one thing we haven't seen on this map so much, and maybe you know Casper's going to take advantage of it, uh, given that the army of Ineffable doesn't really have any detection, and he's free to spread this creep too. But this push is so strong right now. I mean. Casper knows it's there. He's got two uh, of those changelings with the army, but oh my goodness, nine void rays and stalkers and zealots that are all going to be shielding for those. It, this is just really going to be difficult for him to deal with. He does have great spread on these hydralisks. He's pretty much only got hydralisk queens, and he's got a couple of roaches, but he's really hoping to do the majority of his damage with hydras. Now he's decided to move, excuse me, move forward and engage, but. I don't know if that was quite the right decision. He does have some queens there too, but he added air to air damage. Uh, but great time warp getting a lot of those units in there. Great transfuses are going down. Trying to get surrounds down on those void rays, but there's just not enough DPS out of those hydralisks. He's going to be forced to retreat, and I'm not sure how he's going to defend against this. Yeah, he's making nine more hydras, but I mean, at this point, you know, just like we've seen before, I don't know that hydras are the answer. This is a. Uh, an interesting build by Ineffable, very strong too, because the Stalkers do a ton of damage to Hydras. They really do, and you know, I like that he was concurrently getting the air upgrades and the ground upgrades. Now we see all the drones being pulled. Casper knows that he is on his back foot. He needs to kill this army. He needs to stay in this game. Those drones are going to be zoning those Stalkers, and he's going to be pushing forward with the Hydras that are doing all the damage, and that's going to chase Ineffable back. But Ineffable re-engaging while he's off creep, that's a brilliant play as now those hydras and those drones do not have speed. That was actually a great play I think for Casper to send all of his drones out. I mean let's look at the units and see what he has left. He still has 34 drones left but I mean Ineffable only has 43 so that's not that's not crazy but I mean that was able to suck up the DPS of the stalkers so the hydras could actually do the damage they need to to the void rays. And that, yeah, that absolutely kept him in the game at that point, so he is going to have some time to re-rally and try and come up with an answer to this. Still getting out Queens, still getting out Hydralisk, he's not re, uh, reinforcing those drones, so it looks like he's going on full defensive mode, knowing that his opponent is still going on f offensive as he has an Overseer flying through there. Oh, great. you don't see that very often. He just got to corrupt off on one of those Stargates. Hey, I mean... That makes a difference, but unfortunately it didn't seem like Ineffable is really utilizing all of his Stargates as he's been... Uh, I don't think he's actually made that many more Void Rays, maybe two or three, but he's been making a lot more Stalkers, a lot more Zealots. No, but if you get the one that's actively making a Void Ray, you are going to slow it down. <laughs> Absolutely. That is guaranteed. So that was pretty neat. That was actually Contaminate, not Corrupt. It's, I just don't see it enough to even know its name. <laughs> but now we do see the engagement. The Hydras are moving forward, but there's just so much damage coming down from Ineffable. These Hydras are kind of evaporating. He's forced to pull back. And now in retreat, re-rallying behind these Queens, trying to zone some of this damage. And drones are moving forward, but they're not able to get through the line, and so many things are dying. He's retreating again. But what is he retreating to? He's pulling his drones out now to see what they can do, but not enough Hydralisks are left to do enough damage here. So many Stalkers. And these Stalkers are going to be able to clean everything up. Casper GG's, and that is the end of StarCraft II strategy in the StarCraft II Community Team League. Man, that was such an amazing series. I mean, the, it was close all the way through. It was just really cool to see, but, you know, again, just the Void Ray style with Protoss seems to be kerfluffling the uh, Zerg buddies at the moment. Yeah, it's... Uh, Air toss has been incredibly strong. We haven't really seen a good uh, answer to that. You know, I almost wonder if mutalisks may have been an okay choice, but there were just so many stalkers as well. It just seems it seems like every tech that you could potentially go down feels kind of uncomfortable as a Zerg player in that moment. So, uh, at any rate, Pulse moves forward. They are moving on to the round of eight. They will continue in the tournament, and I do believe that we have. Uh, a interview with